Hello everyone, I'm Ling Yu, the Technical Product Manager for PhotoAI, and today I'd like to show you the updates that we have in version 3.2.0. We have a lot to cover. First, I'd like to show you updates to the Sharpen Enhancement. In here, you'll notice that we have three new Sharpen models, the Lens Blur V2 model, the Natural model, and the Refocus model. First, I'll cover the Lens Blur V2 model and compare it to the Lens Blur V1 model. So here you'll see I have the Lens Blur V1 model, and by default, the strength is at a 15, which is relatively low. I actually want to bump that up since this image has a decent amount of blur in it. You'll see here, it does a decent job of cleaning up the image. Now, if I go to Lens Blur V2, you'll see that by default, the strength is already higher. It's at a 67. And the results are also definitely cleaner than the Lens Blur V1 model. For this model, we've improved it to make sure that it handles a larger range of blur. It can handle low blur images all the way to high blur images, and it'll produce a improved, more natural result compared to Lens Blur V1. We've also made sure that it produces, uh, prevents artifacts as much as possible in order to give you a clean result that you are able to use. You will also notice that the default strength for the Lens Blur V2 model is higher than Lens Blur V1. We've updated the autopilot behavior so that in general, it should give you a better result by default. Now for the natural and refocus models, these will be able to handle different types of blur. We find that the natural model has good denoising as well as sharpening. So I would highly recommend using that on images that maybe start off with noise as well. If you happen to misfocus on your subject, you have a shallow depth of field, the refocus model may actually be able to recover some of that. I would highly recommend trying out all three of the models to figure out which one is best for your images. Now, the next thing that I would like to point out, now, the next feature that I would like to point out is autopilot personalizations. So if I go to the preferences, you'll see here that we now have a personalizations tab. This personalizations tab is going to show you all the images that you've edited manually and the data set that Autopilot is using in order to improve the default results and give you personalized selections for models, strengths, and preset suggestions. I'll cover the personalization data for models and strengths first. So on this image, you'll see that by default, Autopilot actually recommends the strong model. And in this case, I think that the Lens Blur V2 model gives a better result. So I'll switch over to Lens Blur V2 model. In addition, you'll see that the strength is set at a 67. Let's say in this case, I actually prefer lower sharpening and I want to decrease it to a 26. If I export this image, then the autopilot will save my manual settings and it's going to use those settings to adjust the model and the strength the next time that I import a similar image. So the next time that I import an image that's like this one, you may see that the model selected by default is actually Lens Blur V2 and the strength will be decreased. Instead of being a 67, it will be slightly lower to accommodate for the change that I made when I exported. We highly recommend you edit a few manual images in order to start training the autopilot in what you like for your results. Right now, the personalization is for the denoise and the sharpen enhancements in particular. That means that any change I make in the denoise and sharpen enhancements will be immediately reflected in the autopilot AI model and the autopilot strength for any new images that are imported. The more images you export, the better the personalization gets and the better Autopilot will be at predicting exactly the results that you want. Now the next thing I'd like to show off is the Autopilot Suggestions feature. In the Suggestions feature, we now are able to track presets and the presets that you apply to your images. 
For this image, let's say that I add a subject focus preset. And in this preset, I have the sharpen subject enhancement and the adjust lighting subject enhancement. If I were to export this image, then Autopilot is going to remember the preset that I used on the image and the fact that I exported with it. The next time that I import an image that is similar to the image I just processed, you'll actually see your preset in the suggestions feature. So here I'm going to switch over to a different image with no enhancements. And you'll see that by default, this image now has the subject focus preset available. If I decide to use a subject focus preset, then it's going to reinforce to the autopilot that I want to use the preset for images like this. If I choose to ignore it, then over time autopilot will start to learn that I do not want to use this preset and it's actually going to remove the preset from the list. This is going to surface presets to you more often in situations where autopilot thinks that you're going to use it. It should simplify the number of clicks that it takes to get the result that you want and also make it a little bit easier to edit images that are similar. The next change I'd like to show off is an update that we've made to the controls menu and enhancements that have selection. So here I have adjust lighting. I'm going to click on it to open up the controls menu and you'll see that the auto selection is now a part of the controls menu. This lets me quickly switch between different auto selections that are available and if I wanted to edit any of the selections, I can immediately go to the Edit Selection menu and then make any further changes to my selection. If I go to the Controls menu and I select Custom Directly, it will take me to the Edit Selection menu where I can make a fully custom selection. We've made this change in order to decrease the amount of time that's needed to flip between the Controls and Edit Selection menu for any changes you want to make to your selection. And overall, we think that this will speed up your processing. The next change that we've made is one that I'm personally very excited about. We've added camera matching profiles to Photo AI, currently for Canon cameras, but we will work on expanding this as quickly as we can. Raw color accuracy is vital for an application that's going to do processing for your images. Photo AI in particular will now read your RAW files in order to determine the camera profile to use in order to get the most accurate colors. Here you'll see I have a CR2 file imported and the header will tell me it's a RAW file and it will also tell me that it has detected a matching camera profile for this image. So this image was shot with the camera standard profile and once Photo AI has detected that, it will apply the camera standard profile to the preview as well. This means that the image I'm seeing here is going to be much closer to what I see when I was taking the photo with my camera. Right now, only Canon is supported, but again, we will work on supporting all other manufacturers such as Sony, Nikon, Panasonic, etc. as quickly as possible. If you were to compare this image to what you see in Lightroom Classic, Photoshop, or Capture One, as well as other image editing applications, you'll see it is now much more accurate. Thank you everyone for tuning in to this Photo AI 3.2.0 update. Please let us know if you have any questions or concerns, and happy editing.